my new obsession is using COB LED lights with projection, like a Source 4. And I had done a review of this Nanlite projector light, which is the or projector attachment to the Forza 60D. A PJFZ60 only works for the Forza 60. I loved this projector lens. This is the 36 degree. It also comes in 19. So I wanted to see what else was out there with as far as affordable projector style modifiers. And on Amazon and in a lot of other places is this Godox modifier right here. I'll put the link below. I forgot what it's called, but I have this connected to a Godox SL60W. And this, it comes in a set. There's different sets that you can get. I got a complete one with a lens, uh, the, the mount, and then I, it comes also with different cookies. And I got one with a, 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 an iris, just like the iris that I have on this Nanlite projector. And here, there's different lenses you can get. This is an 85 millimeter projector lens. That uh, it, it also comes in 65 and, and then I think 120 something like degrees or 100 and something millimeters. And you can also, I think they're coming out with other ones as well. And then finally, I have this Snoot. This is for more for photography, but I also just wanted to compare it with video, how it would look. So this is just a very cheap snoot from newer. And I don't have anything, I don't have anything in here. It's just the straight snoot. And I have this connected, it's a Bowens mount, and I have it connected to the one of my latest uh, COB lights that I had just purchased, the Ambitful FL80 RGB. So this is the Godox 60 and then the Nanlite 60. And this is the Ambitful 80, so it should pump out more light uh, with, the, with the bare bulb because it's more wattage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these projector lights and just shine them roughly four feet away from this color chart here. And just to see what they look like, just to, just to play with them and see how they operate. And then I'll come to my own conclusions of which one I like the best. The, the Nan light is not as adaptable to anything else. You have to stick with Nan light if you want this. This is, a, I think, a 300 or so dollars and combined with the Nan light that you have to get in order for this to work. This whole package, you're looking at around maybe $500 around there. But this Godox and, and this newer, they're Bowens mount, so they could adapt to pretty much any light. So let's see what these projector lights look like. Okay, here's the first setup. This is the Ambitful FL80 RGB, but it's at 5600 Kelvin. It's at 46%, and it, this is going through the newer snoot. Um, my camera settings, I'm shooting 24p, 150th shutter speed, ISO 125 and f-stop uh, 3.5. The uh, Ambitful is at f about 50% right now. I'm going to amp it up to 100%. Okay, so now this is at 100% and it looks perfect exposure on, on, on this on the camera I'm shooting on. It's the ZV-1 that I'm shooting with it, which has a one inch sensor. And you can see here that it's not a perfect circle because I am shooting into a corner. So that's affecting uh, the, the, the shape of the circle. But this is what it looks like. And um, there's nothing inside the snoot. Uh, you, you can get some uh, a honeycomb and you can put some other filters, gels inside. And it's really cheap. This, I think this snoot is under $30. And it can be modified with pretty much any Bowens mount lens or light. Any, pretty much any Bowens mount light you could, you could fix this to. But you can see that there's color, heavy color fringing on the edges there. And it does make a perfect circle. It's just I'm shooting it in a corner. So let me, let me put it off to the side here to show you that it does, in fact, there you go. 
you can see it, it's it's a bigger it's a better circle. It does look like there's a hot spot in the middle because it's just a straight cone. So yeah, that's what that that looks like. Okay, so now this is the Godox with the Godox projector mount, and uh, I'm pointing directly at that color chart. Let me see if it, it does anything. If I can focus it here, let me try to focus the lens mount. See if that does anything. Right there seems pretty sharp edges of the circle. And this is at 50% of the Godox right now. Let me go up to 100%. Okay, now I, now I dial it up to 100%. And the exposure looks okay. It looks pretty good without changing much. So the exposure from the Ambitful to the Godox seems pretty pretty good. That's not a perfect circle because I'm shooting into a corner of a room. So let me position this light more towards the corner here. And let me see if that makes a difference. There you go. Now you get more of a circle. It's still at, it's, it's at a strange angle. That's why that's not a perfect circle, but yeah, it, it comes with uh, the iris, which I don't have in, but it has, it, like this set comes with a lot of cookies that you could put in there to add crazy backdrops. And I'll, I'll just add one right now. This is a little slit, a little diagonal line. Let me see what this would gonna look like here when I put it in. All right. Okay, there you go. Now I just added this one cookie that is just a, a single line. And let me put that line on the, yeah. And I think I could move this around. There, yep, I could, I could move this around 360. Yeah, this, this, this would be cool if you wanted to isolate somebody's eyes. I can see this being used in that fashion. But uh, yeah, great. So that's that light. Um, I have noticed that there's a lot of, see, I'm going to pan up my camera. See right there, there's a lot of bleed of the fixture. Light, uh, or a lot of light leaks. So now let me turn on the NAN light. Now I have the NAN light on with the projector lens and this is very bright. This is much brighter than the Ambitful with the Snoot, the newer Snoot, and then the Godox setup. And it's only at 50% right now. Uh, let me see if I could uh, focus the light here. Get some hard edges uh, right there there might be good enough. So I got some hard edges and they have some shutter blades that I can cut the light. Yeah, that looks too hot. Then this is only 50%. So let me go up to 100% to show you how bright this can get. Okay, now it's at 100% and it is the brightest. It's way brighter than the Godox setup. Let me go back down to 50% because this is way too bright. So now I am at 50% and let me dial in the iris. So this is the iris that is an accessory. This is extra. It doesn't come with the projector light. But now with that iris, I can dial that down all the way there. Open. in its cl most close position. Looks very stagey, very theatrical. And then I can also cut the light with the blades that are in the projector. And I did a review of th this projector by itself. So I'll put a link to just that review so you can see 
all the capabilities of this light. But yeah, so that's, that's a test of all of these lights. Okay, that was a test of all of these, these setups here. My observations of what I just did is that the Nanlite Forza 60 with this projector attachment at 36 degrees is still my favorite. It, it costs the most, but as you saw in my test, it's the brightest and you have the most control over the, the kind of light that you want beamed at your subject or the background or whatever. So this is definitely worth it for if you, if you want a lot of control and a lot of light output in a very small form factor. I still, the Nanlite and the projector lens is my favorite. The Godox is good. I'm gonna get another uh, COB light. The 60, the SL60W might be just too weak. And if I had a better um, COB, more, more high powered, maybe like a 150 or a 200, then, then I would get the same light output as I got here. But I, I like this setup too because it comes with so many different cookies and backdrops and I could swap out the lenses too. That's also something that I could just you know buy more accessories of. I don't like the look of this Godox projector lens here. It looks very clunky and it's not easy to lug around. It, it comes with, with some pouches. This, the lens elements, it, it comes with a protective pouch, but this one doesn't have a pouch. There's no caps. Uh, well, there is a cap in the front here, but it's not something that I could find my, see myself traveling a lot with. Whereas the Nanlite comes in its own cases that it's very, easy to travel with. So this might be more for my studio use. And then this snoot, it is very cheap, but I just don't think there's much use for it for what I wanna do as far as video goes. Maybe for stills it's more useful, but for video, um, even though it's under $30, I don't think I'm gonna use it.